You may or may not be familiar with Ruth Graham, but I bet you know her father, evangelist Billy Graham. Ruth grew up in an amazing family, but the expectations that other people put on her, people outside that family, gave her some very difficult circumstances in her life. And sitting down and talking with her about it was a pleasure. I think you'll enjoy her. It's so valuable to understand that expectations do not always come from where we expect. It wasn't necessarily your parents who put those really difficult expectations on you. For you, it was other people, is that right? That's right. Mother and Daddy were very careful not to put expectations on us because they knew that the world would. Yeah. But they, they put expectations that we were God's children and we were representing Jesus Christ. And so Which is that, so important that's right, right there. And that's yeah. the, those are the expectations you want to put on children, that they belong to Jesus yeah. and they represent Him. But they did not say, you're Billy Graham's children or you know, you got to behave a certain way, you got to dress a certain way. That was not the case at all. And yeah. we lived in a very small community that was populated at that time by retired missionaries and retired pastors. Hmm. So they knew the pressures of family and they also knew um, what it was like to travel and leave family. So we right. were really in a special area where people knew what we were what we were being raised in, but they didn't put expectations on us. Yeah. And that was wonderful. But then when I went to boarding school, my mother thought for us, because she was sent away to boarding school, she was a missionary's daughter in China. And so she thought that the best education would be at a boarding school. So when I arrived at the boarding school, Everybody knew I was Billy Graham's daughter and they all thought I'd be super special, spiritual or no more Bible or no more hymns. And so you try to meet those expectations and you're never able to be yourself. Yeah, that's really the key, isn't mm -hmm, it? Mm -hmm. Because when, when you find that people are expecting things of you that you can't match, mm -hmm. Often we try to make them think that we can, you know, That's trying right. to you pretend to hide who we really are. You pretend. So, how did that impact who you were and how you saw yourself? Well, I pretended. I had to play catch up. You know, I was always trying to be what they thought I was going to be, and even yeah. in college. And so I got there, and everybody on campus knew I was Billy Graham's daughter. And I had to, I was doing two years in one. I had to do my senior year in high school and my freshman year in college at the same time. And I was studying like mad. I was up in my room just really hitting the books. Everybody thought I was upstairs praying and meditating. <laughs> they thought I was the super spiritual person. Well, the boys stayed away from me in droves. <laughs> so it was, it was a really downside to that. Yeah. But um, I again, tried to meet expectations. And my mm. professors would call on me, Ms. Graham, you know the answer to that. Well, I didn't know the answer and it was unfair. Yeah. It was really hard to do. And all along, I, I never was able to own up to, I don't know this, you know, I didn't want to fail. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't until years later when I did fail and I realized I hadn't met expectations that I thought, you know, I have an audience of one and that's the only person that matters. And uh, so that's really, in later, later in life, that's what I came to. What was that breaking point? Because that, that was more as an adult, Yes, correct? I was definitely an adult. Um, it was after my first divorce. And um, I, was re I realized that that time, back in the early 90s, late 80s, early 90s, in the Christian world, you just didn't get divorced. And I was, matter of fact, told to build an extra bedroom on my house and just let him live there so it would look nice. Mm -hmm. And I said, no, that's not honest. And I had to be honest. And I began to become honest and say, no, I'm not this way. I've got to do this. I've got to do, I've got to do what God's called me to do. And, um, but it was not easy. And I, so I just said, no, I'm just not going to do that. And I became aware in a new way of God's total love and acceptance of me. Yes, I'd, my husband had been unfaithful, and um, that was very difficult on its own oh, self. Yeah. But, and we tried to make it work, but it didn't. And so we divorced after 21 years, and I didn't know who I was or what I was about or anything. But um, I married quickly in a rebound marriage, and that lasted for about three months, and, uh, and he divorced me. And I thought, I have really blown this. Mm -hmm. You know, my parents had said, don't do this. Why don't you wait? Slow down. I, but I was... I was bound to determine that I needed to be, you know, taken care of right. and that I couldn't take care of myself because I'd always had somebody taking care of me. And um, finally I realized, yeah. really, within 24 hours that I'd made a ter terrible mistake. Well, here, here's the hard thing is, 
is we all make mm -hmm. mistakes. Mm -hmm. And then we all have to face, how do we move forward? What do we do in the face of those mistakes? What happened when, when you took that to your mother and your father? Well, I had to go, go see them. Um, it was a two-day drive. And the fears multiplied with every mile. Mm -hmm. And questions swirled in my mind. What were they going to say to me? What was I going to say to them? What about my children? Uh, if I had made such a terrible mistake, how could I ever trust myself again? Uh, I was just miserable. And um, I, my, we, my parents live on the side of a mountain, and I wound my car up the side of the mountain. And as I pulled into the place to park the car, my father was standing there. And when I got out of the car, he wrapped his arms around me and he said, welcome home. Aww. That changed my life. That changed my life. Yeah. And the grace that he showed and the forgiveness was just so complete. Mm. And I had always known that my father loved me. That was not an issue. Um, but that was just so evident to me that he was giving his daughter grace. And um, yeah. I, had, I had blown it. He could have said, why did you do this? None of that. He was just so loving and kind. And um, so I, at that point, realized that I wanted to pass that grace on to other people. You know, that, that God had called me to pass that grace on to other wounded people. Yeah. And so that's what I'm happy to do. So those expectations <laughs> were proven um, to be very different. Uh, he, he didn't put that guilt on you. No. Did that help lift the guilt from yourself at the same time? Not at that time. I mean, I felt welcomed and, you know, embraced, but it wasn't until later when I was in church. And I realized that I needed to go and, and to get right with God. And I was, but I was afraid because I was Billy and Ruth Graham's daughter and everybody would see me and they'd think something was wrong. Uh, how many times have we all felt like that? <laughs> I can't right. go forward to church because what are they going to think right. I'm praying about, you know? That's right. So, oh. I, but I did. I stepped out and I went forward and I was the only one that went forward. They all saw me. <laughs> and at that point, I didn't care. Oh, but wow. it was a time for me to just hit bottom and say, God, you take this mess. Yeah. And he did. It was like he was lifting everything off of my shoulders bit by bit, the guilt, the shame, the hurt. And um, that changed my life too. You know, it, wow. was, it was a combination of my father's grace, but then my heavenly father's grace. Mm -hmm. and, um, and later I'd have to show my children grace. Yeah. So. so what would you say to someone watching right now who has felt the weight of expectations in their life, no matter who put those expectations on them, they felt that weight as you have. How would you talk to them about letting those go and being authentic? Well, for me, it was coming to understand who I was in Christ. And my screensaver on my computer lists, you belong, you are loved, you are uh, valued because we have to renew our minds. You know, the Bible says, take every thought yeah. captive to the obedience of Christ. And we do, and that's a battle. You have to take every thought captive because the enemy, we have an enemy, mm -hmm. and he is always planting thoughts in our minds. You're not good enough. You don't know what you're doing. You didn't do that right. You blew it. Why did you do it that way? Um, we have to counteract that with the scriptures, the truth of God's word, and do it over and over and over again. And like I said, it's a battle and it's a process, and I don't think we ever arrive until we get to heaven. Yeah. And then we will have, you know, the Lord welcome us. Yeah. And uh, that will be so exciting. But I think it's, it's renewing your mind, doing things that are healthy for yourself and remembering you have an audience of one. Don't try to please it. You can't please everybody. Mm -hmm. um, it just doesn't work. You'll wear yourself out yeah. and just get in the scriptures. And my mother gave me a great example. She always had her Bible open on the on her desk. And so during the day, she would run back to the Bible, just maybe it was a word, maybe it was a phrase, but she saturated herself in the scriptures. Mm, yeah, that's life changing to yes. you, isn't mm -hmm. it? Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. That, that is just very encouraging for, for all of us to um, understand that our, our Heavenly Father isn't looking down and shaking His no. head and saying, you've let me down, this is not what I expected, no. because He knew all along what was going to happen in our lives, and He never stops loving us. That's right. That's right. He's all love, total love. Well, Ruth is going to be joining us at Women's Conference this year. Cannot wait. So excited. You made me cry today, <laughs> so we'll, well, I'm sure it'll be a lot of laughter, a lot of tears. It'll be a wonderful weekend for all of you ladies who attend. So we can't wait to have you there. Thank you. I'm looking forward to it. 
Well, we hope you are looking forward to it too. You can go online and you can still register. It is not too late. Make plans to be there with us.